Hey what's up, this is Applebee's here. It's starting to get a little bit warmer in the UK mercifully, which means that it's time to gather up a couple of spring things, because sometimes you just want to put away that big chunky tech wear jacket, hard as that might be, and go out wearing something a little bit lighter weight instead. So that's pretty much the theme of today's party, and these are all things, um, with maybe one or two exceptions, that are going to be super easy to wear, very flexible, kind of functional as well to an extent, and also things that are going to look good and be appropriate both alongside techwear stuff and in a more casual streetwear setting as well. So all of these things are going to be all things that I feel like I'm going to be able to get a lot of wear out of and a lot of value out of. Um, so I've gone for things, as you might have guessed by the title, Stone Island, CB Company, very big features here with a cold wall and Y3 as well. Stone Island and CP Company, I think, are going to be particularly appropriate brands here, although they have in the UK a bit of a reputation for football hooligan kind of behaviour, and as you can tell by my very posh home counties accent, it's basically the opposite of who I am, but I think they fall in a nice middle ground between an interest in technical fabrics and performance and innovative features and very casual and easy to wear clothing. So people often will wear this stuff outside of techwear outfits, but I think it can look pretty good with techwear too. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing on this list is the CP Company Overshirt. And I picked this up because I don't really have anything like this in my wardrobe at all. It's something that has an element of smartness because of that collar, but still obviously very, very casual and can be worn in all kinds of situations. Um, they call this an overshirt, but I think it's really more of a shirt jacket because in hand, this material does feel quite substantial, quite rigid. It's a 50% cotton nylon blend. So it is. it has a little bit of comfort but it's not just like an anorak type material. I think looking at it in product pictures, it'd be easy to assume that this is basically just a regular shirt with some zips on it, but it does have a very different feel in hand to that. So it's definitely more suited to wearing when you're out and about rather than sitting in an office, for example. I got this for spring and summer wearing when it's a little bit warmer. You maybe don't want too much more than a t-shirt, but you just feel like wearing a t-shirt by itself is kind of boring. You just want to chuck something on over the top that's pretty casual and can just make things look a bit more interesting. I got this in a size M, so it's quite slim fit on me because CB Company does come up quite small, but I think that helps it look better when it's undone, which is primarily how I plan on wearing it because again, that really helps with that very casual, effortless kind of look. It's got some cool detailing on it. It's got the signature CP Company lens, which is like the equivalent of the Stone Island badge. It's got that nice zip detailing at the top. It's got a double zip on it. Not 100% sure why you'd need that really, but there it is. And overall, it just has a smart, casual, utilitarian look, which I really like. And I think it's going to go nicely, as I said at the start of this video, both with techwear stuff and in a very casual setting, you could wear this alongside some jeans and no one's gonna bat an eye. And of course the black color too, super wearable. You can chuck this over the top of almost any other color and it's gonna look fine. It is kind of expensive as the downside. This came in at 350 pounds on Matches Fashion where I got most of the things in this video. But because it is so wearable and the material feels durable and because it's garment dyed, I think it's gonna age well as well. This is something that has the potential to be a wardrobe staple for many seasons into the future. And I think it has a bit of a timeless style to it as well. So I'm hoping that over that time, I'm gonna get a very good use out of it and it's gonna, I'm gonna get my money's worth basically. Next up is this Stone Island crew neck. This is actually the first mainline Stone Island thing that I've bought. The other things have been Shadow Project and Ghost. And the reason that I've done that is because I'm not a huge fan of the regular Stone Island badge partly because of its association and partly because it does just kind of stick out a little bit on stuff. But I made the exception for this jumper because I really like the, the stitching, this kind of piping detailing that goes over the arms. And it has this little pocket as well, which gives it, uh, like the CP Company Overshirt, a bit of a utilitarian design about it. It has that little, not quite military styling, but just a little bit more rugged and heavy duty than the regular Stone Island crewnecks. And I think that makes them look a little bit more interesting. That did make it a little bit more expensive than your regular Stone Island stuff. I think a normal jumper would be maybe 170. I think this was 210. So it's a little bit of a premium, but I think you're getting a far more interesting piece of clothing for that extra price. Again, this comes up pretty small. This is a size L and I'd normally wear medium and this is still fairly fitted on me. I think it's a pretty good fit. I think the color is really nice as well. Although 
although obviously it's not super eye-catching, neither is it a totally plain grey. Hopefully it comes across in the footage, but it just has that element of like a very slight dusty purple sort of colour to it, and I think that's really nice. So as I say, although I'm not crazy about the badge, I think this is something that I'll end up wearing a fair bit. Next up, also from Stone Island, is a t-shirt. Although I got roasted for buying the Stone Island Shadow Project t-shirt last year, I think it was, I'm back upon my bullshit again buying another one. Thankfully, this one is much cheaper. This came in at 105 instead of 165 but yeah, obviously for a graphic tee, this is a pretty extortionate amount of money. But in my defense, I thought the Shadow Project one fit me very well. A lot of my white t-shirts now are too big, frankly, so I wanted something a little bit smaller. Got this in an L, and again, I think it fits me pretty well and looks quite nice. Most of the Stone Island t-shirts this season have massive logos on, and they really are too brash in my opinion, I'm not a fan. But this one was way more subtle and tasteful, which I thought was good. And on the back, there's this cool geometric map-like pattern with an embroidered Stone Island compass on the back too. So they're putting in a little bit of work for £105, but still, yeah, you've got to really, really think that the branding and stuff is cool to want to pick this up at retail. And next, the Nike A Cold Wall Collab Vomero 5. These ones I've bought on Dover Street Market London. They've still got a couple of sizes left of these. Annoyingly though, I can't show these on fee because despite ordering them over a week ago, they still haven't been dispatched. Some sort of warehouse issue apparently, but hopefully they are able to find them soon. Otherwise, I'll have to pick them up secondhand or something. I initially thought that these were disgusting and I hated them when I first saw them. That massive heel block on the back giving me convict vibes big time. But over time, I did start to appreciate these a lot more. I think up close, they have a lot of cool details about them and little interesting touches and they are just very different to anything that I currently have in my wardrobe. And yeah, I know I said the theme was very easy to wear things. These are basically the opposite of that because they're super loud and super different. But yeah, I just thought they were cool. But anyway, another thing that's interesting about these is that the coating and the finish that's normally applied to shoes to help them resist daily wear and to last as long as possible, that hasn't been applied here, which means that these shoes are going to change and become distressed more quickly than most shoes would, which I think is a really interesting concept. And I really like the idea of something that becomes yours over time that you make your own through use and you can really see the effects that your own wear has on that shoe. So although I normally review shoes when I buy them, I'm kind of tempted to do like a long-term review where I wear them loads over a certain period of time and then review them at the end and kind of see how they changed and what's different about them and stuff. That could be quite an interesting take on a shoe like this. I'm also wondering how these would come out if you dye them because the solarized ones look pretty cool. So maybe something like that could be on the cards as well. And for one final thing, something that I have right here, I picked myself up a nice little pair of these Y3 socks. They've got some cool branding on. Sometimes you just gotta flex, you know? I'm not really that much of a, a hype beast. This definitely appeals to the more street wary hype beasty kind of crowd. But I just thought that they might be interesting because sometimes, you know, you've got this all black outfit on, it's got no branding. You maybe just want to give that little hint of it. And yeah, I think this might be an interesting way to do that. They weren't that expensive either. These came in at 30 quid, I think. And in their defense, they do actually have this kind of pattern on them. So there's like different thicknesses of the sock. I know cheaper socks do that, obviously, but at least they're not like totally stupid. Downside of these, of course, I can only wear these with Y3 shoes because uh, you won't catch me putting Nikes on with these, that's for sure. There's one other thing, which is Dore's Aaron sent me through uh, both a pair of cargo pants and a jacket. So keep an eye out for a dedicated video about that because I want to look at these in more detail because uh, they're going to be quite an interesting budget tech wear option to take a look at. But thank you very much to them for that one. Anyway, that is all of my recent pickups. So I hope you guys enjoy taking a look at them. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. I feel like the overshirt probably is going to be a popular one just because I think the potential wearability for that is absolutely massive. I can really see this being something that I just chuck on every single day in the summer but yeah if you if you're feeling something different then let me know down there in the comments i'll be checking through everyone and of course thank you so much for checking out this new stuff with me and for watching this video and i will see you very soon in the next one
Shout out to Aaron, very underrated techware functionality there. And shout out to this, I did think about picking up the new ISPAs because I think they look a little bit better than the 270s. I ended up returning those because I wasn't really feeling them. But yeah, I think even with these ones, I'm not 100% sold on them. And because I bought the Vomeros as well, I feel like my shoe budget has been all used up for the time being. So I really need to take it easy on the shoes actually. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. There's going to be more tech wary links going up there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider doing so on one of those two sides. I always forget which one. Um, but yeah, as I as I already teased, there's going to be some Dorai's Aaron, some more budget tech wear stuff coming up soon and a bunch of other things as well, depending on what I decide can come up next. So yeah, keep an eye out.